Hold on to that news that will shock you. Yeah, yeah, no we got, worries. Uh, we got someone special that supersedes that announcement. Hello, Absolutely. Sarah Palin, how are you? Hey, good morning. I do not supersede any important announcement, my goodness. Well, we, 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 well, we, we we'll talk to you guys. It, yeah, it's it, good to talk to you as good, always. Good, good to talk to you, too. We were reading, uh, you were talking with uh, Greta Van Susteren. Yes. And I just love the fact that uh, you turned President Obama's slogan, winning the future, into a WTF moment. I, I, I tell you, and this is one of the reasons why people really like you, is because you speak in our language. Yeah, you're you're normal, right? <laughs> I, I don't know of anybody else out there that would have the the the, the courage to to say WTF. What is he talking about? Yeah, brilliant. Oh, yeah. Oh, there was well, several. Thank you. Yeah, there were several of those moments during the State of the Union address. There were. Remember when he took credit for tax cuts in December, and that was one of those re- really WTF. Really. Yeah. <laughs> You fought those till the very last minute, and then still some taxes were increased, like death mm-hmm. taxes. Yeah. Yes. And, and I thought it was interesting where he was talking about how we cannot survive if we uh, bury ourselves in debt. Oh, that was that was the big one, you guys. That's what yeah. uh, triggered that whole WTF thing when he said, you know, we got to make sure that we aren't buried under a mountain of debt. And that's when my jaw dropped, saying, see, that's the problem. That's the disconnect. We already are. $14 trillion. We're heading towards this situation, guys, where it's going to cost billions and billions of dollars a day just to service our debt. We're not even going to get our arms wrapped around that $14 trillion. We can't afford to to service it. And for him to have just I- acknowledged that we can't get there, well, we're already there. That's a problem. The headline in almost every newspaper today above the fold is federal deficit to reach $1.5 trillion. Right, right. Uh, that so that hurts a lot. Yeah, that hurts, and that also tells us that um, the the measures that have been tried under this administration aren't working. Spending more money and growing more government uh, is not going to be the answer, and that's proven by uh, what's gone on in the last couple of years and twenty months of these record high unemployment numbers certainly is indicative of uh, more of the same isn't going to get us there. Well, how how do we fix it? I mean, I don't know if we could cut that many programs or raise taxes high enough. How are we going to get ourselves out of this mountain of debt? We have to live within our means, and we shouldn't look at this point of having to raise taxes, but we do have to cut down to the level that we can sustain. And um, it has to be, you know, a matter of priorities. Matter of priorities has got to be servicing the debt first. I mean, can you imagine if we just couldn't repay our loans to China or to some of these other countries that can uh, uh, cut off energy supplies when we should be obviously producing our own energy? But can you imagine if we couldn't pay those bills and service that debt? So that's got to be our priority. And then the constitutionally mandated services, those have got to be um, continued. But there are so many things, obviously, that the federal government does that they don't have to be doing. And that if the Tenth Amendment were respected by the feds and if the, the states and our local communities had more autonomy, more authority in managing our own affairs, then the federal government could shrink. Um, look at Department of Energy and Department of Education, other things that are needed on the federal level, but not to the largesse that we see them today. Let the states have more say in how we control our resources, our lands, how we control the the programs that are mandated, and um, that starts uh, ratcheting down some of the the costs uh, Uh up there on the federal level. You know, watching the State of the Union, um, as soon as the president started talking about salmon, I perked right up. And I wanted to really focus in on that. And, you know, he, he did make sense when he said you have commerce when salmon are in the ocean. One department oversees salmon. Then when they get in the rivers, another department oversees salmon. Uh, that is a that is a symptomatic uh, problem of the big picture. Don't you well, think yeah, that 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 is a problem? We, we have duplicative um, regulatory agencies doing different things, and, you know, there doesn't seem to be a lot of coordination. That's on a federal level, mm-hmm. also on a state level, also on a local level. You know, in, in a, say, a, a town like Wasilla, you have four levels of government over your head. You have the city, state, uh, you have the feds, and you have the borough in there, too. So four levels of government, and, and, you know, a lot of that, I believe, is just 
unnecessary. But yeah, when he started talking about salmon, yes. my my ears perked up. I'm like, hey man, now that's below yeah. the belt if you're coming after yeah. the salmon, you know. And he didn't really talk a lot about energy, um, but you know, one of those moments that those WTFs that got me was, uh, and Donald Trump mentioned this. Cuddling up to China is a huge mistake. They are not our friends. They are not allies. In the business world and beyond, politically, socially, economically, they are totally opposite of America. Well, we're wondering then if, if some hardball is being played behind the scenes and then there's just a, kind of the theatrics of, of going along to get along with China and there are good buddies right now out there on a national stage for the public to see. But Hopefully, you know, behind the scenes, there is some uh, tough negotiations going on when it comes to the import-export imbalance that we have. And um, China is making some good points, though, guys. When they start talking about, uh, hey, America, back off on you preaching to us that we need to readjust our currency and the value of our currency so that the import-export balance um, is a little bit fair, when Essentially, America is doing the same thing with our own currency when you look at what the Fed is doing to essentially devalue our dollar by uh, priming the pump. We're, we're, we're printing more money and we're mm -hmm. throwing it into the system, and that eventually devalues the dollar and can lead to inflation. So China's looking at us saying, hey, you guys are doing the same thing that you're telling us not to do. And, uh, you know, certainly I think behind the scenes that, that, that causes some consternation. Well, I, I guess... You know, if you were the president of the United States of America right now, okay, mm -hmm. and you had a to-do list, okay, yep. one, two, three, what's number one, what's number two, and what's number three? Number one, we announced that we're going to cut the corporate tax rate so that our industries can come back to America and know that this is where they can produce and, and keep more of what it is that the industries and companies and businesses earn so that they can reinvest and hire more people. So cutting the corporate tax rate even further and then sending the message, too, that we're, the federal government cannot afford to be in the business of bailouts. We're not going to be able to afford this Obamacare at this point, so we're going to have to repeal that and just replace it with some common sense reforms for health care. Um, I agree with the um, the moratorium on earmarks, even though that's only sixteen billion out of the you know one point five trillion dollar a deficit that we're looking at this year. But the earmark reform certainly is needed, so that's on the to do list. Uh, cutting those non constitutionally mandated programs and, and things like. Um, you know, we can ratchet down national, uh, um, the, the NEA, uh, and we can ratchet down funding for NPR and let the private sector fund that. Well, we can ratchet down subsidies for Amtrak that loses so much money. Uh, we can start opening up our lands for the energy independent steps that we need to take. There are so many things that we need to do, and then big picture stuff, guys, with the entitlement programs. We have got to reform the entitlement programs and certainly not adopt any new ones because we can't afford the ones that we have right now. Mm -hmm. But the entitlement programs that are on the books for new enrollees, the rules have to change. And we can't be messing with people who are, have already paid into the system all these years and are expecting um, a return on their investment as they trusted government to wisely invest their funds for their uh, secure retirement but new enrollees the program benefits have to change you know it's funny because a specific example right here in anchorage was the school district and their budget shortfall and there was a program uh that was seeded with uh stimulus money 56 million dollars that money ran out it's gone so now the school district said, well, we're going to have to cut this program unless the state or the city picks it up. That was specifically what people were warned about in the stimulus package, that Absolutely. we're going to locally, we're going to be on the hook now. Well, exactly. And you can't manage the, the public's expectations either. Once you receive those dollars, you accept them from the federal level, and they do have fat strings attached to the feds because the feds then have more control over the people in a state, over what the programs are going to be in the projects because it's the money comes from the feds. So you, you give up some of your freedoms and autonomy in the state by accepting these dollars, and, and the, the Department of Education certainly is, um, is a player in that. 
I remember as governor vetoing some of the energy funds and just about got run out of town for that. And the Republican led legislature eventually overrode that veto because I was trying to explain that a portion of the energy funds in that package that were we to accept them, then the feds would have control over out there in our villages. Some of the um, the rules that would apply to receiving those funds would be uh, a certain size window pane would have to be in a home. Um, different uh, energy efficiency measures would have to take. Well, it would be the state that would have to then hire the bureaucrats to get out there to the different communities to make sure everybody was following the rules and could measure those window panes and all. And I knew that it would be this perpetuation of a problem where the feds give us, quote unquote, free money, which is never free. And then it's the states and the local communities who have to pick up the tab to keep it going. And um, that's a vicious cycle that this nation is on. And, and something like that has absolutely got to stop. But perfect example that you're given there with the with education. So we're talking with Sarah Palin. Um, we'll let you go because we know we're really busy, but there's, there's something that I've wanted to ask you for quite some time now. Um, they talk about these polls that they give about your approval ratings and, and negative and positive feelings about you. Does it kind of hurt your heart a little bit? Because it, it hurts my heart a little bit that you are treated harsher in the state of Alaska than you are almost anywhere across this country. Does that well, hurt a little bit? I try not to pay attention to those poll numbers because, you know, I I know that my heart is there in Alaska with Alaskans. I, you know, I love Alaskans till, till the day that I die. Here, Here's the deal, though. What hurts are the lies that come from Alaskans. Look at this recent BS about Todd supposedly being all caught up in a, yeah. a prostitution ring in Anchorage yeah. and then... APD had to come out and say, "Bull, there's no, there's no evidence." Or heck, somebody, all they needed to do was ask me or ask Todd himself. Hey, Todd, you've been hanging out with hookers and anchors. <laughs> and he tell the truth, and obviously it was yeah. a big lie. But things like that, you guys, that come mm. from Alaskans, and then they go viral. They're picked up by national and international press. We've been dealing with that issue the last two weeks. It's a waste of time. Things like that are hurtful because when we trace back the lies and know that they come from our home state of Alaska, that's what hurts. is hurtful. But besides that, um, you know, I know that other people take a heck of a lot more meaningful, hurtful shots than we do when it comes to things that really matter in this world. People who are losing their jobs or, you know, maybe they have a sick child or their health is in jeopardy and those things that, that really truly matter in life Todd and I and our kids, we know that we're so extremely blessed, and we'll take those political shots that come our way, but I sure do wish that people would just believe in truth and tell the truth, and then we could all uh, uh, be a bit more productive and not waste time in this world. Well, amen amen to that. And, and one last question, we'll let you go. Are you running for president? <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys you'd be the first to know. I, I, just, make it now. I, just, I just think it would be just hilarious if you just went, yeah, I'm going to. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just see how fast it would take for that just to go. Yeah. How fast people would react with a WTF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I got, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got another question. Are you going to go running anytime soon? Yeah. All right. So oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin says she's running. There you go. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, for your time this morning. Yes. Keep on, keep on, keeping on. And and you know, Sarah, you you've always oh. you've always been kind to me, and you're you're a friend of ours, and you'll always be our friend. I yes. just want you to know that. Always. Hey, thanks so much. Go Aces, and Go you guys Aces. keep up the good work. All right, All right thank thanks, you. Appreciate your, kind, your, your time this morning. Thanks. All right, that's Sarah Palin. All right, we're going to take a break. We're a little bit late. It's the Bob Mark Show. We've been here. We'll be here. That's